I wanted to start a unique FIFA 23 save. I don't want to become a manager, but instead a director of football. So that means it would be my responsibility to pick out and sign a manager, my responsibility to scout players and hire coaches while they'll be in charge of all matters on the pitch. This means team selections, tactics, trainings, and of course everything to do with match days are all off limits for me to make changes to. It's the ultimate test of my player recruitment skills and of course, if things don't work out, my manager picking skills too. Forget manager mode, we're playing director of football mode on FIFA 23. You might have seen from the thumbnail, we'll be going straight in as Chelsea's director of football. Our first move, firing Frank. Lampard is performing just as bad as he's done in real life, so let's have a look at some of the managerial candidates. Do we crawl back to Jose Mourinho? Do we hope Pochettino will fit in? Maybe Nagelsmann, company or Simeone will be the right man for the job. Let's have a look at our squad. It's suited for 4-2-3-1 and it's suited for fast counter-attacking. This rules out Simeone and company, they just don't play in this style. Jose is off the table as well because he would be pretty embarrassing to rehire and Nagelsmann has just moved to Spurs on our save. This means one thing, welcome to Chelsea, Mauricio Pochettino. So we have a manager, we have a style of play, now let's give him some players. First of all, a striker. This is pretty good timing because there are four top strikers all on the market at the same time. Osimhen, Kane, Vlahovic and Gonzalo Ramos all fit into that strong striker role that we need. We send out our scouts and we find out how much each club wants for each player and clearly the best option is actually none of them. Instead, Christian Nkunku, welcome to London. Next up, we get an email from Mauricio. He says Kante has passed his best and he wants a new centre midfielder. I don't fully agree with him, but we'll see what options we have. Apparently, Moises Caicedo is going far below his market value, so let's add him to our list of recent Brighton purchases. Welcome to London for just £10 million. So now we've pretty much blown our entire budget on these two signings, so it's time to work behind the scenes to clear out some of our deadwood. Aubameyang is out, Mason Mount out, Gallagher out, Saar, Chalaba, Baba and Bakayoko out, 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 out. Even after this, we've still got 10 players on the transfer list. Totally mad. We're into August now and the action is going to move from us in the boardroom to Pochettino on the pitch. We pick up 9 points from our first 4 games, which is a huge improvement on the Tuchel, Potter and Lampard era at Chelsea. With such a good start, we set him a target of 20 points from our next 7 games. Anything above this is a bonus, and anything below, and maybe we need to start looking elsewhere. While these matches are going on, we've sent out scouts to find the next generation of Chelsea heroes. More specifically, we want strong attackers from the Ivory Coast, physically strong midfielders from England and playmakers from Italy. If we find anyone worth sharing, of course, I'll let you know. So now we're entering December and we're doing pretty well in the league. Poch just managed to get us up into third place. That's not the only good news, we've actually got a decent amount of cash from selling our Deadwood, so we'll be going into December with a budget of £75 million. This gives us quite a tough choice. The Premier League has several overperforming young players. Players like Brennan Johnson and Romeo Lavia. On the other hand, Declan Rice and James Madison have been both listed as available, and both are interested in joining us in London. Do we spend big on future potential, or do we go for the player who instantly fits into our starting 11? Thanks to our excellent negotiation getting so much money for Mason Mount, we could actually afford to sign Declan Rice for £22 million plus Hakim Ziyech and also grab Brennan Johnson for just £18 million. Both would go straight in for an FA Cup game against Ipswich, with everyone really enjoying Johnson's 34th minute debut goal. However, our successes off the pitch were not being reflected on it. We'd fallen from 3rd place down to 9th in the Premier League and while we had managed to win our Champions League group, we would want to reach at least the semi-finals for Pochettino to survive a full season. His decision to start Mendy over Kepa was a massive, huge mistake and put the first nail in his coffin. Sure, some of the blame is on us with Brennan Johnson now being our starting striker and Nkunku playing at attacking midfield, but why would we spend big for a striker when the next manager might prefer Lukaku anyway? With the first leg loss being confirmed, the second leg at home was now a matter of survival for our manager. We'd already received word that Andrea Pirlo, Ruud van Nistelrooy and Chabi Alonso were all interested in the job, but we still had to back our existing manager. 
Knowing it was his last chance, Pochettino switched up the squad for the home tie. Cucurella replaced Chilwell, Sterling came in for Pulisic and for the first time this season, Kante and Rice would play together in midfield. We needed to get something from this game, so when Nkunku's cross found Madaweki and the winger headed in, we were level. It went to extra time and that came and went, Kante, Enzo and Havertz all linked up with our only chance, and that meant things were going to penalties. Rhys James could have won it with our fifth penalty, but his team effort was easily saved. That meant sudden death. Kante would step up coolly and slot his penalty home. All the pressure was on David Raum. Mendy guessed right and he redeemed himself from that first leg mistake. Maurizio was safe, for now. This performance seemed to make a huge difference on our players. We went unbeaten in March with 5 wins from 5 games and Pochettino actually won manager of the month. Had we just narrowly avoided making the massive error of sacking him, not only were we winning games, but also our players were improving rapidly on the training pitch. The semi-final was still our goal in the Champions League and Liverpool were the team that would be standing in our way. We were below them in the league, but we had already beaten them twice. Any team with Salah, Diaz and Jota up front being supplied by Milinkovic, Savic and Thiago is a scary proposition. We fully believe with all of our heart that Mauricio is the man who can stop them and get us into that semi-final. Thankfully for us, the first leg was in London. Our home form had been pretty good this year, so we really needed to get off to a good start. They'd pick Gakpo and Nunez over the higher rated Diaz and Jota, which was encouraging for everyone in the director's box. Raheem had grown into our team over the past couple of weeks and he nearly put us ahead. Imagine a former player knocking you out of Europe, how embarrassing that would be. Oh dear, Salah in the 90th minute, one of our former players, could it be any worse? At least we had a second leg, surely we could go to Anfield and fight for the result. They were playing well, and so were we, well not all of us were, a clumsy trip from Koulibaly on Salah saw a penalty, but yet again, Mendy was a hero and kept us in the tie. Silva showed he still had something to give, even though he's leaving on a free in 3 months time, but no matter what we tried, it was just Liverpool attack, after Liverpool attack, after Liverpool attack. And Darwin really should have finished us off, but yet again, Mendy was able to stop him. Before we knew it, there was the final whistle in the second leg. While one manager ran on the pitch to celebrate, the other walked back to the tunnel alone. He knew what was going to happen, he had failed as Chelsea manager. We'd lost. We were still struggling in the league and we were out of Europe. The season was a failure for Pochettino. We only had one choice. Mauricio Pochettino's contract was terminated the day after the Liverpool match. In his place, we'd let first team coach Ashley Cole take over for the rest of the season, with our focus already turning to 2024. The season played out how you would expect. Cole lost more than he won, we fell away in the table even harder, and Chelsea would finish the season in a dreadful 11th place. To say we sacked Lampard for finishing 12th last season, we really should have done better with our manager choice. We did find a few potential stars in their youth academy, so maybe next season, youth development will need to be a big skill of Pochettino's successor. If you've got any suggestions who you think should be the next Chelsea manager, leave them in the comments below. And if this video gets to 2,000 likes, I'll make a part two in this series. But thank you all for watching. Check out the video in the playlist if you want to see more FIFA career mode content. Thank you for watching. Cheers and goodbye.